So good evening, Barcelona. So it's a day one, and you know, we got a lot of uh, good tones said by Mark in keynote, and I hope it sets the last session for the day. So uh, we'll talk about the evolution of uh, OpenStack from the mission critical viewpoint. That's the topic of the talk. And after that, you can enjoy the party. So to start with, let me introduce myself. So that's who am I? I'm an open source software leader at NEC. Uh, name is Deepak Kumar Gupta. So my Twitter handle is uh, D Kumar Gupta. And you can locate me. So I'm from India. And in India, the location is Noida. About me, so a brief uh, introduction of myself, having about 16 plus years ex uh, of experience in Linux and open source software. Uh, started career as a Linux kernel developer in 2000 year. So at the time, I think uh, Linux was having about uh, version 2.2 and 2.4. Worked uh, largely into Linux kernel cache dump, memory management, file systems, and then later on worked with Zen, KVM, all virtualization technologies and storage products. So I specialize in you know, file, block, and object storage, and, and all, all across uh, open source software. Presently, I'm working as a head of uh, uh, NEC Open Source Software Technology Center in India. And uh, my, my first affection with OpenStack started in way back at with Folsom release in 2005. So that's my introduction. Maybe, uh, so, Let's define mission critical system. What is a mission critical system? So mission critical system is a system which always works when it's supposed to be. And system which never fails. So that's the definition of mission critical system. And oh. OK, so, so, so that's the reality, right? So that's where we, we come. And they say, a failure is not an option. It comes bundled with the software. And that's the pitch of my talk. When we talk about the machine critical systems, well, how important is it to analyze the system from all viewpoints? So to set the tone, again, defining machine critical systems. So there are certain attributes of machine critical systems Availability, scalability. So availability talks about a system should be available all the time. And scalability talks about it should be able to scale up, right, without any limit. Performance, another key attribute. So a performance attribute talks about a performance of system should not go down with scale up. Manageability, that's, that's pretty, pretty critical attribute. And those who are managing OpenStack, they can appreciate it. You know. Manageability, uh, uh, managing a large system, a uh, machine critical system, is something you know uh, which is day in day out job of many of us. So it it has to be manageable. Interoperability. So a system does not stand stand alone. It has to interact with lot lot of systems, and that's where the interoperability comes in picture. So a system should be interoperable seamlessly with other systems, and of course. Security, or oh, the system must be secured enough to be used in any of the machine critical application. So let's uh, set the background about, uh, and this is the famous chart, right? The uh, innovation adoption life cycle. So the dot I kept here, this, this represents the open stack. So it's an open stack maturity mapping. So no, I mean, uh, in my opinion, it's, it's ready for early majority, right? And, and uh, for those who are very data-driven, let me be clarifying, it's my own opinion, yeah? So just opinion. So that's how we, we look at the system, uh, open stack, at stage. And uh, as we know, the adoption is increasing. In morning, we saw the numbers, right? So uh, my presentation talks about a methodology to evaluate OpenStack from a mission critical viewpoint. And the process we talk about, you know, this methodology is generic and useful for evaluating any open source software uh, before adopting into a mission critical system or scenario. 
okay so this is the evolution process it's you know it's talk with uh, something and it's pretty uh, simple as you can see and you can create a great software app so so that's the way okay so uh, uh oh it's going backward okay so we talk about the evolution process of you first step is uh, analyzing the requirement what a machine critical system supposed to do then we do the modeling modeling of the entire system and then we do uh, when then we do profiling so profiling we talk about the runtime profiling in uh, a requirement analysis section i am focusing towards open stack so we identify the component of open stack you know as we know uh, it's, it's a uh, there are a lot of components coming up in uh, open stack and not everybody and every system is using every component so selecting the appropriate component for your use case is a very very first step and once you identify the component for example you may go with cinder nova swift or whatever you want to, want to have then you need to identify the use cases which is critical for your system okay in the modeling section we talk about the uh, composition of entire product it's pretty important to understand what kind of files and folder the system is having so whenever you install that say open stack in uh, in any of the box how many files the system produces and then understanding the process structure so while you run any component of open stack how many processes threads are created in the system so this information is pretty critical because you know at the moment we go for uh, mission critical systems understanding the system behavior before the software and after the software is pretty important then i think we go for the profiling that is the last step where you know we integrate uh, any of the profiler with the ring system and try to capture the profile data and this profile data is useful for identifying the bottom x or you know mission critical uh, points what we talked about so in profiling you know, we got a uh, two kind of profiling single profiling and multi profiling single profiling talks about uh, running a single use case for example getting a nova volume is a simple use case right and we need to uh, analyze the code into the depth try to identify the points which are critical or which are becoming a bottleneck from mission critical view point multi profiling is you know running multiple scenarios for example uh, while creating a volume you can kill a process so that 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 qualifies for the multi profiling right and again analyzing those uh, profile data and identifying the bottlenecks okay so uh, let's focus on the recombinant analysis phase and recombinant analysis phase is having uh, component identification for example you know in this talk we'll be talking about one of the reference system what we created out of the open stack and we analyzed it so uh, we chose following components as a primary component that is neutron nova glans keystone heat cinder swift cylinder and ionic so we chose this component as a primary component and they, they are very critical and secondary component these components are optional so we had a tro horizon sahara manila zakar designate and barbican so these are the secondary component we had in our system and after that you know we created the use cases so typical example of use case is you know create volume or create volume from image or list volume so these are some of the use cases which are applicable for the cinder similarly you, know, you can have a, you can create chassis create node or create port these are the use cases defined for the ironic and you know uh, the use cases Uh, we design is one of the critical step and we design in such a way that it covers most of the operations right uh, for the system which is that uh, target system next is uh, abnormal use cases so uh, abnormal use cases are again uh, we define them well in advance so these cases are not normal behavior of the system and uh, for example you no know, killing a process while creating a volume can be a normal scenario or you no know, stopping a service whenever some operation is going on so these are the normal use cases you know and uh, we run those use cases try to analyze the logs and data 
Okay, so in evolution process, uh, uh, we have uh, mentioned components and the uh, use case count. So we talked about three releases here, and you know, I mean, uh, this is for a given system. We were evaluating the system for consecutive three releases, and uh, use case count talks about the applicable use cases. For example, in our system, when it was in kilo release, we had uh, nine use cases for heat, and uh, again, you know, when it moved to liberty. We had 12 applicable use cases. Similarly, in the Mitaka release, the use case count increases from 12 to 17. And again, this, you know, as I mentioned, this use case count is based on the target system requirement. Next is the modeling phase. So, as we talked about modeling, so uh, in modeling, I think the, it's pretty important to understand the architecture what we had for a reference system. So uh, as you can see, you know, we, get, uh, we got uh, a few nodes. They are running on the virtual machines. And we primarily used Rails 7.2 as a base OS on which uh, every analysis was made. So we got uh, uh, two compute nodes. That is, you know, one is of Nova, one is of Ironic. And then you got a network, Cinder, and you know, Swift nodes. The components of OpenStack are shown in the uh, pink color boxes. And there are some additional components which were running on the system. For example, Apache, MySQL, RabbitMQ. They are the secondary component which we used for analysis. OK, so uh, in modeling, so uh, when, once we install the component on the nodes, we list down the stalled folder structure and identifying each and folder file for usefulness. For example, when you install Swift or Nova, how many files it creates at which location. Then analyzing the runtime behavior of the system. For example, you know, when we start the service on of any component, we need to check the runtime behavior of the system, how many processes or threads are created, and then identify the differences from the previous, previous release for the same component. For example, you know, maybe Swift in uh, kilo release is having certain behavior or certain processes which may change when you have same Swift in the Mitaka release. So we need to analyze the differences, how many new processes or threads it, it creates. OK, and the uh, purpose of uh, modeling is to verify each and every system level uh, change due to presence of OpenStack component on that node. Uh, next and very important step is profiling. So uh, profiling is you know, integrating a system profiler onto the node where OpenStack component is running. So uh, the, 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 uh, we, in example, we had a typically five node system which we used. And then we install a profiler like LTTNG or any, any similar profiler tool can be used to profile the data. A tool should be having a, uh, ability to capture the profiling data in a non intrusive way. For example, you know, the profiler should run independently of the OpenStack component and it should be able to capture the data. So that's the basic need. And uh, we need to keep the frequency of sampling to the maximum so that you know, minute level details can be captured till system call level. Right? So it's pretty important. Capturing of uh, profiling data. So uh, how, how to capture the profile data? The process is pretty simple. You know, we start the profiler service on the node, for example, you know, until ENG start. And then we does run the use case. So for example, an open stack, volume, delete the volume name. Then we stop the profiler service on the node and dump the profiling data at appropriate location and analyze the data using appropriate toolkit. So please uh, remember that you know, since we have a lot of sampling done, so size of uh, profiling data can be huge. Now, now the process starts. So we already had a system which was running. We already had a modeling report. We already know the runtime behavior of the system. Now, uh, we create the process flow or sequence diagram for the use case. And when we say process flow or sequence diagram, the sequence diagram is having detailed uh, millisecond or microsecond level accuracy of each and every operation or function call. Right? So that is in-depth analysis what we do. And then we verify uh, for the mission critical observation. So mission critical observations are typically, for example, you know, uh, if an API is accessing the data, database, and uh, uh, if it's a single call and it's taking, let's say, a few seconds, 
if I increase the call and the time of database access is increasing sequentially, which means there is a bottleneck, right? So there are certain thumb rules which we set up while we analyzing this, this kind of you know, behavior of the system. And uh, then you know, we verify our observation. For example, as I gave example of single axis, double axis, and we got uh, some observation that performance of database is degrading. So we need to go for the multi-profiling or you know, having more detailed use case scenario execution. And uh, once we identified the problem, then look for the solution. So typically, you know, we look for the solution by checking modeling reports or checking for uh, some, some of the configuration parameter if they can help us in uh, creating the solution. Once you apply the solution, you need to verify by rerunning those use cases and analyzing those bottlenecks at the source code level. If, of course, no solution is available, then list down the observation as unsolved and you know, maybe uh, raise a bug into the community for that. So uh, this is sample output, so don't uh, read into it. It's quite uh, complicated. I could not capture the screenshot. So typically, you know, it, this uh, uh, diagram denotes that when you go for profiling, you have huge, huge volume of data to be analyzed. So analysis of this data using certain scripts or maybe manually takes a lot of time. And uh, this is a kind of uh, evolution report which we generate out of the system. So for example, uh, if you look at component name, NOVA, and we got uh, a report of performance, scalability, availability, and interoperability. So the number, the count here we're talking about, uh, it says number of mission critical observations. So in NOVA, when we, uh, this is a report which we uh, use for kilo release. So in NOVA, we got two performance bottlenecks while we used NOVA component in our mission critical scenario. Similarly, uh, if you look at, uh, glance was almost clear. Only it has uh, three to four interoperability related observations, right? And uh, similarly for the other component in the release. Now, uh, looking at this chart, uh, it seems that a lot of uh, changes are required, but it's not necessary to fix all of them. This report is useful for me to take a conscious call whether can I go with the system with this kind of limitations in hand. Because some of the bottlenecks, what we identified here, can be solved just by changing the configuration parameters. You can have a small change in configuration, Rerun the service, things are solved, right? So no need to fix everything. And then the motive is to not have a patch on the community version of home stack in a, in a system. So let's push the changes to the community so that you know, uh, those source code can be managed at community level. So the primary uh, motive of this kind of evolution is to solve the problem, solve most of the problem by not changing the source code. We may go for different kind of configuration options and try to solve them. If bottleneck is quite critical, cannot be solved, then only we go for the next release and try to see the fix. Okay, okay so uh, let me focus on the example of uh, problems or bugs we identify using this kind of methodology. So uh, this diagram. Uh, this report basically talks about uh, uh, evolution of Keystone, right? And uh, we observed certain problem in Keystone using our methodology. So the problem in Keystone, in the, uh, the Liberty release, you know, we observed this problem. And the problem was database schema is not scalable. And it may lead to the performance issues if user count increases. How this observation came? So what we did, we created uh, 10 users and tried to fetch uh, the information about the user using uh, Keystone API. And we observed the time. We found that you know, it took somewhere around 0 0.649 seconds to fetch the records. Then we increased the number of users 
and observed the time taken. So the time increased from 0 0.6 to 1.78, right? Which indicated that there's there's a problem. There's a problem of uh, scalability. So as you grow the number of users, you'll find more and more issues. Uh, next observation was the CPU consumption data, which is again available at a profiler side. Right. So we observed that in first operation, the CPU consumed at MySQL and was 3.2%, and the second case, CPU consumption increased to 34%. So this clarified our doubt that definitely there is an issue. Right. So it must be resolved. And also we observed that you know it's not possible to solve this issue just by changing configuration, because this is a fundamental core issue. If keystone, it must be reported. Okay. So uh, uh, we analyzed the source code and observed that you know the database of Keystone must be changed or some fixed must be uh, reported. And uh, of course, I think uh, we inquired and you know we uh, we got a team also we, which uh, works in OpenStack community. So we uh, discussed this kind of behavior with the developer and we filed a bug. Right. This bug is being fixed in the next release, right? And then we are adopting the uh, next upcoming release for, for our work. Okay. So uh, this is the typical outcome by using the methodology what we used in our system. And uh, the prime motive of this talk is to advertise the methodology what we use in evaluation of any open source software before we deploy in a machine reading system. Okay. So we at NEC, I think uh, we try to ensure that whatever we deliver to the end customer, be it open source, it has to have the highest quality benchmark passed. Right? So that's where I think the, the system, you know, whatever we deliver is uh, going through this kind of rigor. And you know, we ensure each and every use case, whatever is being delivered, is delivered up to the accuracy. Okay. So, um, okay. so uh, that's all. I think uh, I finished quite early. I wanted to have a discussion with uh, people. So I kill the presentation now, and it's time to have uh, some of the questions or interaction what we can have. Yeah, so what we do, uh, we report these kind of problems on the community. So we got a team who works on different components. So we got some of the core developers, some of the contributor. They file these bugs to the community, and this community fixes those bugs. As far as report is concerned, it's a pretty, uh, I mean, it's use case specific. So there's no point sharing those kind of uh, reports, because you know, it's, not, it's of no use to uh, any, any, anybody else. What do we do? We extract the information and give back to the community in terms of bugs. <laughs> OK, so uh, what we do, for example, let's say we file this bug. And you know, developer needs to have some data, some observation, right? So we uh, provide date information to the developer that this is the behavior, this is the test case, this is how we, you know, I mean, uh, we observe the behavior by using this test case. And uh, developer can verify the bug, right? So typically, uh, developer doesn't need the profiler data done. They need a, a scenario to produce the bug, right? And that's what we create uh, the scenario, produce the bug and give the test case to the developer so that he can you know, produce the bug. But if, if, uh, if if someone else wanted to to reproduce that process mm -hmm. elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's pretty easy. So for example I, I mentioned uh, about the uh, basic notes uh, basic five node system and any open site deployment you have and there's open source tool called entity ng that is Linux Trace Toolkit, right? Uh, and pretty standard manual is available. Anybody can install that uh, software on any of the node, wherever, you know, whatever the person wish to target. And reproduction of those same logs is pretty easy. It won't take more than a day or more than a half day to set up the entire stuff. 
the, the challenging part is to uh, analyzing the logs or dem data. So that's where I think uh, it has to be done using some custom scripts or whatever, you know, manual, manual way. So that's a painful job, right? And that's where I think uh, we try to reduce the pain for the developer and try to you know, create the scenarios which can directly be run on the standard deployment of Moonstack in PubMB Observed. So if somebody is interested, let's say if you're interested to set up the system, please bug me. I'll, I'll help you out. And maybe you can have small documentation also how to set up the system like. Okay, so uh, if you look at, uh, you're talking about this table, right? Okay, so the first table you talk about a number of use cases reducing from uh, uh, maybe this one. This one? Okay, so for example, you know, if you look at uh, uh, from for, for the Nova case, number of use cases in Liberty increased, and number of use cases in uh, Mitaka decreased. So uh, the, the target system requirement ch changed, right, during the Liberty release, right, and that's where I think more use cases for Nova became applicable, right, and from Liberty to Mitaka, changes in Nova were very very few. So most of the use case or analysis, whatever we have done in the Liberty release was applicable in the NOAA release. So the new use case count was pretty uh, small. Right? So since there was no change in component and our use case remained constant, so that's where I think uh, everything remains as it is. Uh, you can you can see it up. So I think uh, due to lack of time, I think I didn't uh, mention all these cases because I wanted to finish up in you know given time. But you can anyway see the list list of use cases. Are they online? Uh, not not really online, but I think it's it's a pretty simple use cases derived out of the APIs only. Yeah. So it's possible to I mean share that use case. It's not a uh, big job. Okay. Okay, I know. Did you, you talked about the machine critical points? Yep. Um, yeah, like so you had a column, for example, for availability. Uh, so I'm, I'm very interested in availability issues. Mm -hmm. um, so is, is there a way that I can see you know, these issues in more detail? Yeah, I think uh, you can see. See, most of these issues are, I mean, as I already said, you know, we got at NEC, we got a lot of community contributors. So they have uh, reported those bugs. So these issues are having two kind of issues. One is the bug which I showed. Second is the issue with the configuration, right? So we change that configuration and solve the issue. And it's pretty well, you know, I mean, given back to the community. So what we do in our system, whatever we uh, apply, we give back to the community in community recommendation also. For example, you know, if you'd like to use uh, Nova optimally in such a scenario, then in documentation, you know, let's say they, they forgot to mention about the config change and what is the impact of that config change. We contribute, contribute it back to the community, the documentation part. Sure. But, yep. so, so, but how do we see that? Mm -hmm. like, I mean, if, for example, if I wanted to know what is the availability issue with heat that is listed there, okay. how could I find that out? Yeah, I think uh, it's possible to have, so if you're interested, maybe, you know, you can get in touch with me. We can always have discussion on those use cases. And for that matter, you know, anybody who's interested in any component, we can always discuss those uh, troubles, what we faced, maybe, you know. And you'll find those troubles uh, anyway on the community documentation or community bugs, right? So most of them are there in the community report. Okay. So uh, you'll not find the consolidated report. Right. Because the consolidated report is, you know, is the maybe, I don't know if in community people are interested in having specialized report which is you know useful for my case community people are interested in knowing the problems in the component which should be generic enough yeah. not use case specific so that's where the entire effort goes so i think i'm right in saying that there are, there are currently there's not a mechanism for tagging a specific bug as being related to availability of the 
Right. Mm -hmm. yep. So maybe I think we can have an offline chat and we can explain the process, how, how we do. Maybe you know you'll find a better way to do it, but you know it's all about uh, profiling data and you know uh, dumping the data and analyzing it. Right. So that's the I think challenging job what we have. CCD we use, so I think uh, I mentioned about LTT ng, so LTT ng is just one, one, one tool. So we do use a lot of tools, for example, for network monitoring we use NetPerf or uh, all the proc processes of Linux are being used. So as you know, we have a uh, Linux rel 7.2 as a base OS on which we are running the profiler. So all the, all the tools which are available in Linux we use, especially for the tracing and profiling. So it's not only LTT ng, there are many tools which are required. Yes, so uh, yeah, so when we upgrade from one release to another release, this component do impact, and that, that's where the problems are reported to the community, right? Yeah. So when you upgrade Nova from let's say one release to another release, so there are certain issues which are observed. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Thanks.